Hi, fourth grade. It is Miss Wilson again. I'm coming to you today, not with math, but with grammar, because we still have to get our grammar every week. Even though we're on this extended break, we still need our grammar. So since we know that I'm the math teacher, not the grammar teacher, we're going to have a guest teacher today. Her name is Not So Wimpy Teacher, and she is going to give us a lesson on dialogue. So our objective today is you will be able to identify and use dialogue in your writing. So we're going to go ahead and invite her to our uh, page so she can give us this great lesson on dialogue. Today we are talking about dialogue. Dialogue is something that great writers use. So right here, this sentence, the exact words that a character says is called dialogue, she told us. The sentence above includes dialogue. So what do you notice? Well, it defines dialogue for us. Dialogue are the exact words that someone says. But you might also look at the dialogue and you're going to see those strange, almost like commas, but they're not down low, they're up high. Do you see these right here? There's two here and two here. We call these quotation marks. And the words that a character says are always between these two sets of quotation marks. So let's take a closer look at dialogue. All right, mom told me to clean my room. Clean your room, said mom. Can you see the difference? The first sentence up here, mom told me to clean my room, does not use the exact words that mom used. I'm telling you that mom told me to clean my room, but I'm not telling you the exact words she told me. Down here, clean your room, said mom. Now these are the exact words she said. She said, clean your room. All right, and you're going to see that the dialogue is between the quotation marks and then it tells us who said it. I'm gonna break down this dialogue. There's two big pieces included in the dialogue. First, we have the actual dialogue. This is exactly what the character said. Clean your room, said mom. What she really said was clean your room. She didn't say, said mom. She said, clean your room. So that's the actual dialogue. But this over here, the said mom, this is important too. It's called a tag. The dialogue is what was said. And the tag is who said it and how, sometimes how. This one just says said mom, but it could have said whispered mom, shouted mom. It could tell you how, but it will definitely tell you who said it. So we've got the dialogue and the tag. Together they make up the complete sentence. All right, clean your room, said mom. We're still looking at that. And we already pointed out that there are quotation marks. There's a set here and a set here. There's always two sets of quotation marks, always two. They come in pairs, they're like twins. And they hug or wrap around the words that the character actually said, clean your room. So the quotation marks are around those words. Now, before the second quotation mark, there's always some sort of punctuation. And with this statement, there's always a comma. So dialogue is punctuated with quotation marks and you're going to see some commas, but there's always gonna be some punctuation here before the quotation mark. The way that dialogue is punctuated is different based on whether or not the sentence is a statement, like the one we've been reading about clean your room, whether it's an exclamation, that's one of the excited ones, or if it's a question. They're all punctuated slightly different. Also, dialogue can be punctuated differently if the tag is at the beginning or if it's at the end. We were looking at a sentence where the tag was at the end, the said mom was at the end, but sometimes authors put the tag at the beginning and it changes how dialogue is punctuated. Let's take a look at some examples. First of all, we're looking at punctuating dialogue when the tag is at the end. This is the most common way you are going to see dialogue. Remember, I told you that it's going to be punctuated differently based on whether or not it is a statement, an exclamation, or a question. And so I have an example of all three here. Let's start with a statement. 
I baked some cookies, said mom. This is a statement. And you're gonna notice the exact words she said were, I baked some cookies. So we've got our quotation marks here, right before the first word she said, and we have quotation marks after the last word she said, cookies. Now before the quotation marks though, we need to have punctuation. Always have to have some form of quotation before that second set of qu quotation marks. With a statement, you are going to have a comma, then you are gonna have your tag, and this, the, the whole sentence will end with a period. This is how you properly punctuate a statement with dialogue. So you've got your words that, that the character actually said are between quotation marks. Before the second quotation mark, though, you have to have punctuation. And for a statement, you're going to have a comma. It's like the sentence isn't quite over yet. So there's a comma, said mom, period. Let's look at an exclamation now. It's a little bit different. I love when you bake cookies, I exclaimed. Okay, the words that... They, the character said, or I love when you bake cookies, so you're going to notice a set of quotation marks. The first one goes before the first word, and the second goes after the word cookies. But before the quotation mark, we need punctuation always. And with an exclamation point, we're actually going to put the exclamation point there because we want readers to know that they should say that sentence excited. I love when you bake cookies. But there also has to be punctuation after the tag there will be a period at the end of the sentence. So it's got the exclamation point inside of the dialogue and at the end of the tag, it's got a period. There's actually two, two punctuations there and that's very unusual. You don't see that too often unless you're punctuating dialogue. Let's take a look at a question. It's very similar to how an exclamation is punctuated. Can I have two cookies? I asked. What the character actually said was, can I have two cookies? So that's their actual words. And so they're going to be between quotation marks. There's one set here and one set here. And you have to have punctuation before the second set of quotation marks. And in this case, we have to have a question mark. It helps readers to know that they should say that like a question. And then after the tag, we have a period. So you can see that it's very similar to how the exclamation is punctuated. It is the statement that is a little bit different because it has a comma and the period. But some things you're going to notice about all three. First of all, they always have two sets of quotation marks and they always wrap around the actual words that the character said. You are going to notice that there's always punctuation before that second set of quotation marks. If it's a statement, there'll be a comma. If it is an exclamation, there'll be an exclamation point. If it is a question, it'll be a question mark. And you're going to notice that they always end in a period. All three types are ending in a period. So you'll see there are several things that are similar about these different sentences and how they are punctuated. All right, let's try some examples. So we have the example, the statement, I baked some cookies, said mom, and I put the example up here so you could see it. But now we're gonna try and punctuate this one correctly. Put your name on your paper, said Mrs. Cook. I like to start by figuring out what the exact words the character said are so that I can figure out where to put my quotation marks. So what did Mrs. Cook actually say? She said, put your name on your paper. She didn't say said Mrs. Cook, right? She just said, put your name on your paper. So I'm going to go ahead and start by putting quotation marks here before the P and your quotation marks on your keyboard should be next to your return key. And then the last word she said was paper. Put your name on your paper, said Mrs. Cook. Perfect. But now I know that before the quotation mark, there's always punctuation before the second quotation mark. This is a statement. And so I know a statement has to have a comma before the second quotation mark. And I know when the tag is at the end, they're always going to end with a period. So just like the example, I've got my quotation marks, I've got the comma, and I've got my period. All right, let's look at another example. I love when you bake cookies, I exclaimed. That was our example, so let's try this one. Don't forget your lunch, yelled mom. Okay, so she's yelling, so we know it's an exclamation. But first I wanna find the exact words that she said. Her exact words are, don't forget your lunch. That is what came out of her mouth. So I'm going to make sure my quotation marks hug those words. Don't forget your 
lunch. Now I also know that there has to be punctuation before this second quotation mark, has to be. This is an exclamation, so it needs an exclamation point. That way you know that her exact words were said excitedly and that every time there's a tag at the end, it's going to end with a period. Don't forget your lunch, yelled mom. Perfect. Let's try another example, this one. Can I have two cookies, I asked. That was our example. And now we're going to try one. Can I sit next to you, asked Wendy. All right, what did Wendy actually say? She said, can I sit next to you? Those were her exact words, so I am wrapping them in quotation marks. Now I know there must be punctuation before the second quotation mark always. Since it's a question, it's going to be a question mark. And I know that whenever the tag, the asked Wendy, is at the end of the sentence, that I'm going to end it with a period. Now it looks just like our example. I mentioned before that sometimes writers will put the tag at the beginning. They do this because it makes the writing more interesting. If you're writing with lots of dialogue and it's always at the end, then it can get a little bit boring for readers. So sometimes a writer will switch it up by putting the tag at the beginning. And when the tag's at the beginning, it does change the way things are punctuated a little bit. So let's go over that. Here's some examples. She whispered, don't wake the baby. So this is a statement. The actual words that she said were, don't wake the baby. She didn't say she whispered. So you'll see that the quotation marks are wrapped around, don't wake the baby. Now, just like with tag at the beginning, there still has to be punctuation before the second quotation mark. Since this one is a statement, it's going to have a period. Now up here, we have our tag. After the tag, we'll add a comma before the next set of quotation marks. And you might notice that this D is capitalized even though it is a word in the middle of the sentence. It's because it's the first word she said. And the first word that she said should always be capitalized. Let's get the next one. I asked, can I hold the baby? So what she actually said was, can I hold the baby? And that is wrapped in the quotation marks. There must always be punctuation before the second quotation mark. And since this is a question, it's going to be a question mark. Over here, we have our tag. And after the tag, before the actual words, there's going to be a comma to separate it. It's like a pause. I asked, can I hold the baby? You're also going to notice that the word can is capitalized because it is the first word that she said. So we want to capitalize that. The third example is, she exclaimed, of course you can. Now remember this tag is helping us to know that this is an exclamation. So the exact words she said were, of course you can. So I've got quotation marks right before that first word and quotation marks after it. They're hugging the words she actually said. I know that before the quotation marks, I must have punctuation. And since this is an exclamation, I'm gonna have an exclamation point. I'm going back to my tag, she exclaimed, I'm gonna have a comma before the actual words and the first word of the actual dialogue will be capitalized. Let's try a few of these. She whispered, don't wake the baby. That's our example. We can use that to help us. Kara said, I will be right back. So we've got our tag at the beginning. Again, figure out which words the character actually said. In this case, she said, I will be right back. So I'm going to add my quotation marks around, I will be right back. Remember that before that second quotation mark, there always must be punctuation there. I will be right back is a statement. So I'm going to punctuate it with a period. I'm gonna go back to the tag, Kara said, and add a comma before the actual dialogue. So there'll be a pause, Kara said, I will be right back. I'm also going to check and make sure that the first word of the dialogue is capitalized. And in this case, it already is. The I is already capitalized. All right, perfect. Let's take a look at another example. I asked, can I hold the baby? So the one we need to work on says, Brady asked, can I have dessert? 
First of all, we ask ourselves, what are the exact words that Brady said? In this case, it is, can I have dessert? So I'm going to wrap the exact words with the quotation marks. And now I know that that second quote set of quotation marks has to have punctuation before it. Can I have dessert? That's a question. So I'm adding a question mark. I'm going to go back to my tag. Brady asked, I know I must have a comma before his exact words. And the last thing I need to look for is that the first word of the dialogue is capitalized. Can should be capitalized. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that lowercase c with an uppercase c. Brady asked, can I have dessert? Perfect. One last example. She exclaimed, of course you can. Now the one we need to do says, Hannah exclaimed, I am so excited. So what did she actually say? Yeah, she said, I am so excited. So that's where I'm going to put my quotation marks. And now I know before the second set of quotation marks, though, I have to go in and add some punctuation. The tag helped us to see that it should be an exclamation point by saying that she exclaimed. If it says that they exclaimed or they yelled, then we probably need to use an exclamation point. I want to go back to my tag, though, and make sure there's a comma before the exact words, and then just check to see that that first word is capitalized. And in this case, it is already capitalized. The word I is capitalized. So what are some things that all dialogue must have? Whether the tags at the end, the tags at the beginning, whether it's a question, a statement, or exclamation. Well, absolutely all dialogue has words that the character actually said, and all dialogue has a set of quotation marks. It's going to have one right before the first word that the character said and one after the last word. So there's going to be a set, a pair, a twin. And then dialogue always has punctuation. You're probably going to be using some commas and you're definitely going to have to be very careful to watch whether you're going to need a period, a question mark, or an exclamation point. All right, I hope that helps you with punctuating dialogue. It did help us. I really learned a lot. Um, it's bringing back my fourth grade memory of grammar. So I hope you enjoyed our guest speaker. I learned a lot from her. I hope you learned a lot from her. Uh, definitely take this time now. Let's write some dialogue. Write the words that, that are said to you, the things that are coming out of my mouth. Uh, let's write some dialogue and remember that we got to have a pair quotation marks. All right, so till next time, I so enjoyed myself. Bye.